Professor Miramanov. Thank you very much for giving us five minutes at a very busy ESTRO meeting for you yes. to talk about your very, very important translational research in the area of uh, radiobiology, but also yes. specifically in gliomas. And yes. you were a moving force behind the tamazolamide work. Would yes. you like to tell us about how that went? Yes. Actually, it was interesting because in the late 90s, we had done quite a lot of work with different uh, radio sensitizers uh, in Lausanne, but in Europe, uh, using uh, sensitizers like uh, carbogen, nic nicotinamide, and we had done uh, preclinical data, and, and we had done uh, clinical studies even uh, within the ORTC that were unsuccessful. So therefore, we set uh, various platforms, brainstorming meetings, actually between the radiation oncology group and the brain tumor group. And one of them, I remember very well, it was in 1997, was very successful. successful. We had, in particular, invited a young oncologist, Roger Stubb, now who became famous. And amongst the many ideas that we discussed during this uh, brainstorming, came the idea of adding temozolamide mm. to uh, radiation. And that was the beginning of the, the, the story, and uh, a successful story in a way, as you know. I uh, was part of the URC Brain Tumor Group for, I think, 15 years, and we did yes. eight successive negative trials. Yes. And yes. temozolamide was the first positive one. Yes, correct. Yes. Why? Well, you know, I always but now it's uh, 13 years ago and I, I was thinking what was the you know the, the reason why it was successful because was it a bit of luck was it science or was it anything else and I think it was all these things because at the time there was not much uh, lab data on the interaction between temozolomide and radiation it came afterwards there were some studies that showed that uh, temozolomide and radiation in vitro increased the inhibition of growth of uh, uh, cell lines of glioblastoma. There was very little actually. And there was a lot of intuition from the part of Roger Stoop, I must say, because he actually put a schedule of daily temozolomide during radiation. And then it was demonstrated that not only the temozolomide is very good against a glioblastoma, but it's a radiation sensitizer, and that was demonstrated very, very nicely. So the science came, but there was a, a lot of luck initially, I must say. I have to say that it was lucky that we had patients with glioma in the phase one trial of temozolomide, yes, which happened yes, when I was absolutely. at Cancer Research UK, yes. Cancer campaign then, uh, because we don't usually put glioma patients into phase one trials, and we yes, got yes. very, very quick responses, yes, yes. clinical responses. Yes and also with melanoma. But then you did some of the best um, translational science around this drug with the methylguanine yes. transferase yes. and so on. Yes. Would you like to yes. tell us how that yes. kind of research is moving on now, yes. in 2010? Yes. Well, that was the work in my hospital of Dr. Monica Hege mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, neurosurgical lab. And she was one of the first ones, not the first one, one of the first ones to demonstrate that some of the, about half or a little less than half of the, uh, the tumors had a uh, methylation of the uh, gene promoter uh, for MGMT, methylguanic methyltransferase, which would inhibit the production of, of MGMT. And therefore, these patients were more sensitive to both radiation and, uh, and, and the drugs. So she demonstrated that very nicely in the cohort of the patients, of the 500 patients or so that we had, and we could really uh, define now a subset of patients who would be really good responders, and some, and, and of course survivors, some you know, are long-term survivors, and some who are not. And now at the ORTC, there are now new studies that would sort of uh, uh, do a uh, MGMT test beforehand, and then the patients who are methylated, the good responses, would go into a new trial with a new drug, silangetide, and the other one uh, who are poor responders are really subjects of very, very new innovative studies, like uh, uh, various, you know, anti-angiogenic inhibitors and so on. Mm. But also we think that the association of temozomide and radiation, which is now considered to be a standard, should be now the backbone for new studies to see really 
if we add something to this so, sort of backbone, would really improve the outcome of these patients, which is still unfortunately quite uh, not very good. Sure. And one of the drugs we were talking about would be maybe the PARP inhibitors, which uh, we yes. certainly set up yes. uh, uh, explorative studies in Newcastle yes. in the UK yes. with yes. Professor Hilary Calvert yes. on the back of temozolomide resistance. Yes, yes. And now PARP uh, 1 inhibitors are in the clinic and yes. they're looking very yes. promising in BRC1 2 mutated yes. patients. Yes. What do you think of this as a potential adjuvant? I think it, it absolutely needs to be, to be tested. Mm. But I must say that the list of uh, agents or is candidates <laughs> is indeed uh, fairly fairly long. You know, well, what's know. at the top of your list? My list, you know, my, my in my heart would be the uh, you know the uh, VEGF inhibitors because, as you know, there is a lot of angiogenesis going on mm. in, in glioblastoma. So I think, and, and there are two randomized trials actually that are going on that look at that. But anything that you know would inhibit some pathway and help also not only uh, the action of a drug, but radiation would be absolutely fantastic, provided, of course, it, uh, the drug crosses the brain, uh, blood-brain barrier and yeah. uh, these kind of things. Yeah. Thank you very, very much indeed, Professor Mirman. That's yes. really interesting, and good luck with your next uh, five years of uh, translational research in yes. brain tumors. Appreciate it very much indeed. Thank you so much for having invited me to this uh, interview. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor.